Good evening, everybody. How are you guys doing? Hope you're having a nice Saturday. This is Pepe Cuenca from Spain, and I welcome you to the game of the day of round number seven of the Grenke Chess Classic. Today, I bring you one of the best chess games that one can watch as a chess fan, and this is a fight between Magnus Carlsen, the current world champion, and Levon Aronian, one of the best chess players in the world. He was maybe one of the favorites to win the Candidates Tournament last year, but as you guys know, at the end, it was Fabiano who won that tournament and who qualified uh, for the World Championship. Today's game, it's been really interesting and it's been a hard fight. So let's cut uh, the nonsense and start analyzing what happened in the 64 squares. So Magnus decided to open with d4, knight f6 was played by Levon Aronian, c4 and e6. As you guys know, after knight c3, most of top players, they play the Nimzo India. And uh, Magnus Carlsen stops that by playing knight f3. Here there are many alternatives for, for black here. You can play the queen indian with b6, the bogo indian with bishop b4, also c5 to uh, go for Avenoni uh, defense, and d5, and this is the most common, and then this, is, uh, this, so this was the option uh, chosen by Levon Aronian. Here again, two main alternatives, g3 going for the Catalan, and knight c3, and this is what Carlsen plays and here, again, a lot of alternatives. That's why chess is, ho is so hard, right? Bishop b4, dead rock goes in, c5, going for the Tarash or semi Tarash variation. Bishop e7, normal queen's gambit position. And d takes e4 was the option chosen by Levon Aronian de Vienna. If you guys like this opening, you can uh, watch a video series made by Jan Gustafsson in Chess24, which is extremely interesting. This is a really uh, complicated opening to understand. Black is conceding the center, and that's why uh, white plays e4 occupying the center. Here, if you do nothing with black, White will just recapture this pawn on c4 and then will be extremely happy in that position. So that's why black normally plays bishop b4. Black's idea after bishop takes e4 is to take this pawn on e4. And that's one of the main lines. Instead, Magnus plays bishop g5. After bishop c4, as I was saying, knight takes e4, let's say short castle, knight takes e3, b takes e3. It's well known that taking twice, the taking the second pawn, sorry, on c3 is a, is a big mistake. So normally here, black goes bishop d6 or bishop e7, and this is a very complicated theory. But instead here, uh, Magnus decided to go for the other main line, which is bishop g5, pinning the knight on f6, and black plays c5 here, uh, striking in the center. There are two main alternatives here. You can take the pawn on c4, as Magnus Carlsen did, also, e5 looks very interesting, right? Because uh, we are threatening to win a piece and it's very hard for black to stop that. Actually, this is a, a piece sacrifice, uh, which is very, very interesting for black. You can actually uh, see this in Jan's video series in Chess24. The, the line continues, c takes e4, queen a4 check, knight c6, long castle in order to stop d takes e3. Bishop d7, knight e4, Bishop e7, e takes f6, g takes x6, sorry, f6. And this is a really interesting line. As you can see, uh, black's a, a piece now, but in return, he's got a lot of pawns in the center, and actually, white has to be really, really careful in these lines. So Magnus Carlsen, after c5, he took the pawn on c4, and now c takes e4 was played by Levon Aronian, and Magnus took with the knight. And then some of you guys at home could be saying, come on, Pepe, stupid Spanish guy, why don't you take the pawn on d4 with your queen. Well, that's a really bad move, because after queen takes e4, knight takes e4, knight takes e4, and actually black's much better. So that's why white is forced to take the pawn on d4 with the knight, knight takes e4, and here, black takes on c3, b takes c3, and queen a5. Black's attacking the bishop on g5, and the pawn on c3. And here is where, uh, where Magnus Carlsen plays a really interesting novelty. There are almost 1,000 games in my database with this position, and in every game, um, almost everybody plays bishop b5 check or bishop takes f6. Both are well-known lines, but Magnus here plays bishop d2 here, which is a novelty, and then we'll come to that in a minute. I just want to show you uh, why these positions are so complicated in the main line. Let's say bishop f6, queen takes e3, intermediate move check, king f1, and then some of you at home could be thinking, come on, Pepe, this is just winning for black. Queen takes e4 check, and after king g1, g takes f6. Well, be careful, because after rook c1, 
the bishop on c8 is just hanging and actually black loses because the rook on h8 is also hanging so that's why after queen c3 king f1 g takes f6 for example rook c1 queen a5 and h4 and white has sacrificed a pawn but as you can see all black pieces are on the back rank this king is coming to g1 this rook is going to join the party uh, via a3 where actually it can go to g3 or f3 or even c3 d3 later and actually these positions are extremely complicated to play with both colors so instead magnus goes for bishop d2 and then the critical line of course is knight takes e4 probably lemon and Ronian smelled uh, that magnus had uh, an extremely uh, interesting preparation in the critical line so that's why i think he uh, chose correctly and then he didn't go for the critical line and then he went short castle here we'll come to that in a minute and then we'll follow the game but the critical line uh, could have continued after knight takes e4 queen g4 with a double attack on the knight on e4 and on the pawn on g7 knight takes d2 queen g7 intermediate move attacking the rook on h8 and the knight on d2 and here black has two interesting options the, the engines say that knight takes e4 is the best move queen h8 king e7 and now white has to go short castle c3 uh, is a target and then let's say after knight d7 or even knight d6 the position is extremely crazy because black has two pieces for the rook if black manages to consolidate the position will be much better but it's really hard to consolidate the position with this skin almost naked we can see his balls right and then this rook is going to come are going to come sorry to e1 or and d1 there are a lot of tactical shots with knight f5 later or even plans with f4 f5 uh, are extremely interesting so that's why Levon didn't want to go for this. Also this line, after knight takes e2, queen takes e7, rook f8, maybe the most human move. King takes e2, and still this position, the engines say, is more or less equal, but Magnus probably had a really interesting preparation. This rook is going to come to e1, this rook maybe to b1 or d1, and a lot of tactical shots against black's game. But as we say, Levon Aronian didn't want to go for the critical line, probably... Uh, a good option and then he went for short castle now magnus plays queen e2 protecting the e4 pawn and this is probably a small victory for magnus because lebron aronian he if he knew the position probably he would he would have come uh, for the critical line but this here this position magnus has the bishop pair uh, and a good position but still his structure is not so good that's why the position is more or less uh, equal in this in this moment magnus is trying to go for e5 that's why lebron anonian plays e5 himself attacking this knight knight b3 attacking the queen on a5 and queen c7 natural square you protect e5 you attack the bishop on c4 short castle by magnus carlsen and then bishop g4 a really interesting idea by lebron anonian attacking the queen f3 and now his idea is not going to h5 this bishop is basically doing nothing against this pawn chain here on the king side you don't want to go to e6 and ruin your pawn structure and then you you don't want to go to c8 yeah back home right probably bishop d7 was interesting but it, he managed to find this continuation rook c8 which 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 looks very interesting because now again at home you guys could be thinking come on pepe stupid spanish guy ugly spanish guy what happens after bishop f7 well it looks like white is winning a pawn after queen f7 f takes g4 but there's this good move for the black player queen c4 and then black is gonna manage to take either the e4 oh queen f3 queen takes e4 g5 queen takes rook takes and knight d5 and then this position is more or less equal so that's why when I was uh, doing commentary in Spanish today, I was thinking, come on, Magnus is gonna, is gonna play bishop d3. But then the problem is this bishop can now retreat to e6 and then black has interesting ideas by exchanging this light squares bishop where even though uh, white's position looks nice, it could be ended up, uh, it could end up uh, being worse after training this light squares bishop because, because of the structure on the king side, right? But Magnus, instead, after the move, rook c8, he goes for bishop d5, giving the bishop pair. But it's actually a really interesting move. You guys are gonna see the idea. So knight takes d5 was played by Levon Aronian, and e takes d5 by Magnus Carlsen. Now the bishop on g4 is attacked. So bishop h5 was played by uh, Levon Aronian. Also stopping f4 ideas. 
and now you guys see Magnus's idea. He goes for c4, and now he's got a pass pawn, and then these pawns uh, are gonna uh, march on the queen side. If, of course, if white manages to play c5, then uh, probably black's position is already dead. So that's why black has to stop that. How to stop that? Levon played knight d7. You can take on c4. This is a poison pawn, right? Because after the mook, uh, after the move, rook a c1. It looks like black's uh, winning a, a queen, but after the move, rook c8. Boom! Back run problems. Checkmate. So that's why c4, knight d7, and then which rook bring to c1? The a rook or the f rook? Do you guys know where we think? When we think in a chess tournament, probably it's always the the the, the other way around, right? We normally think, okay, this rook belongs to a1, the other two c1. Uh, mistake then we see the engines and then it's on the contrary right but magnus plays rook f to c1 this is a really interesting uh, idea why because now if black uh, wants to stop c5 is forced to play b6 right otherwise we are gonna we're gonna play c5 in the next move and black is much worse that, so that's why levon aronian played b6 and now uh, there's this breaking point a5 which magnus is gonna try to use after playing a4 and then this rook on a1 is perfectly placed uh, there could be some cases where the a file is gonna get open or even though uh, sorry or even we're gonna trade these pawns on b6 and then b6 could become a target so that's why this rook uh, on c1 is perfectly placed and the other one on a1 so a4 was played by magnus carlsen and here a tough Decision for Levon Aronian. He has to decide whether he plays a5 or he allows Magnus to play a5. He tried and played a5 himself, which is uh, a reasonable option according to the engine. The engine, sorry. And here Magnus goes for queen f2. Already putting an eye on the b6 pawn. If you want to go bishop e3 straight away, Black could have this extra option of going e4, and now. It's gonna take on f3 and then our pawns on the king side will be ruined. So that's why queen f4 targeting b6, stopping e4 ideas, and queen d6 by Levon Aronian. We have to say that also queen f4 is preparing Facundo f4. So that's why he goes queen d6, which fights against this f4 idea. Because now if white pushes with f4, e takes e4, bishop takes e4, this queen has the option of coming of coming, sorry, to b4, attacking c4 and white could be in some trouble so that's why magnus didn't go for f4 but instead he goes for bishop e3 targeting b6 and here probably magnus's idea is continue with rook b1 and then increase the pressure on b6 so that's why levon plays bishop g6 stopping rook b1's idea queen d2 was played by magnus carlsen and f6 reinforcing the center also giving black the uh, possibility of reallocating this bishop on f7 later here, queen b2 was played by Magnus Carlsen, and it looks like he's doing nothing, but he's always doing the same, yeah? He plays slow moves, and then he puts uh, problems uh, slowly, really slowly, with his Norwegian screwdriver. Here, after queen b2, uh, Levon plays rook c7, and now knight d2 by Magnus Carlsen. Now, you never, uh, you can never go to f7, since there's a knight coming to e4, and also... White is introducing uh, an extra option of trading queens with the move rook a3. Let's say if black goes rook a c8, queen a3, queen takes, rook takes, this endgame is a little bit uncomfortable for the black player because this rook is going to come to b3, putting a lot of pressure on b6, probably later to b5. Another rook could, could, could end up being on the b file and b6 is going to be extremely hard to protect. Whenever one rook goes to b7, then c5 is even stronger. So that's why Levon Aronian here went for knight c5, which is also threatening to go knight d3. So Magnus plays queen a3, pinning this knight now. And then here Levon plays rook d8. Now probably he's intended to go knight d3. And then after trading queens, this knight could come to b4, stopping the pressure on b6 from the rooks. So that's why here Magnus plays another prophylactic move, rook c3. And at this point, Levon Aronian uh, was already in a little bit of a trying trouble, and then he makes a big uh, uh, mistake. We could say it's uh, an important mistake. He goes for the move f5, believing in Facundo, so I understand him and I forgive him. But f5 here is not the best move 
in the position. It's already tough to play here with the black pieces, because now Magnus is probably trying to go rook a2, rook b2, later rook b5, and then the rook on b5 puts a lot of pressure on c5. This queen later could uh, come to b2, putting even extra pressure on b6, so it was already tricky to play here for Lebron Arunian. So he goes for f5 and tries to create counterplay on the king side using his majority. But at this point, Magnus chains, changes targets. Well, probably before his only targets, uh, sorry, target was b6, but now there's this target on e5. Since you have played f6 to f5, then e5 is gonna be very, very weak. So he goes rook e1, and now Magnus's idea is just to take on c5 and then later put pressure on the e5 pawn. Let's say black does nothing, for example, h6, trying to give some fresh air for the black skin. Then bishop takes c5, rook takes c5, and there are a couple of interesting options here. You can go queen b2 and then rook b3. This knight on d2 is doing a fantastic job protecting c4. And also rook uh, c to e3 and then queen b2 or queen c3. It's going to be extremely hard to stop... Uh, to protect, sorry, this e5 pawn. So after rook e1, now Levon Aronian tries to create a little bit of a mess with the move f4, back Magnus really fast. He plays f takes e4, f takes e4, and bishop c5. And already black's position is extremely hard. It looks like Magnus does nothing in his games, but of course he's, he creates like small tricks, small troubles in uh, after every move. And here his position is already much better. So rook takes e5 was played and knight takes e4. And Magnus is already a pawn up and it's hard to play for Lemon Aronian here. If he takes on e4, he didn't do that in the game. After rook e4, this rook is coming to e3 and then this queen is coming to c3, rook e6, rook e7 ideas, even rook e8. It's almost impossible to, 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 to defend this with black pieces. So queen e5 instead was played by Levon Aronian. Of course, don't take the rook now, since there is checkmate in one move. And then we cry. So that's why rook c to e3 was played by the Norwegian. Now he's, of course, threatening to take this rook on c5. So rook c8 by Levon Aronian. And the best move, according to the engines, was played here again by Magnus Carlsen. h3, giving pressure to the white skin and just waiting for black to move. Black can't take never this pawn on c4 because there's knight d2, tucking the queen, tucking the rook, and white wins. So queen c7 was played by Levon Aronian and the simple knight d2 is a very good move for the white player. Now Magnus is intended to go rook e7 and queen c3 and create a lot of pressure on the g7 pawn with a mating threat. So rook e8 was played by Levon fighting for uh, the file, but rook e7 still by Magnus Carlsen. Rook takes e7, rook takes e7, and now queen d8 was played by the Armenian, but he goes queen f4, more active, then still the same problem, queen c3, threatening checkmate, queen f6, takes, takes, and rook b7, and now black has to resign, too many pawns for Magnus. So he went for queen d8, and then queen e3, another really beautiful move, centralizing the queen, aiming to go to e5, and creating nasty threats against black king. Rook c7 was played, and again, another simple, subtle, and good move. Rook e6. Greedy, this guy, wants to take another pawn on b6. Rook c5 was played by Levon Aronian here, and after queen b3, the Armenian resigned. He hasn't got any contemplate. The knight on d2 is just a god. It's just a god. Protecting the only weakness on white's position, which is the c4 pawn, then b6 is gonna fall, the queen is gonna land on b6, and then too many troubles for Levon Aronian. What a fantastic game by Magnus Carlsen, who's leading the tournament. A point, uh, he's got uh, one more point down, Fabiano Caruana. So, uh, it's been a fantastic game, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this, analy this analysis. Remember, Tomorrow, uh, we come back with English and Spanish commentary. And I hope you guys are having a fantastic evening today, Saturday night. Just behave a little bit. So tomorrow you can follow all the action in Chess24. So it's been a pleasure for me. And see you tomorrow in the next Game of the Day video. Bye-bye. See you, babe. See you, baby, I said. <laughs> I, I'm getting crazy. All right. See you guys. And bye-bye. Uh, <laughs>